Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's video. Uh, my guest today is Dr. Mikey Pasek. He is a, an assistant professor at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Mikey, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for being here. So we wanted to talk about your paper in terms of the effects of uh, bringing up the idea and thinking about God on prosociality. Uh, but I first want you to just tell us a little bit more generally about as a researcher, what are the questions that most guide your work? Absolutely. Um, at a broad level, the question that I'm most interested in is understanding how our various identities and beliefs interact with each other to shape our intergroup attitudes, the way we perceive the world, and our moral decision making. Um, a lot of my research tends to focus specifically on, on religion, uh, in part because it's an identity and belief system. So I find it to be this really fascinating topic and because we know a lot less about religion in intergroup relation settings than we do a lot about other important identities like our race or sexual orientation or gender. So a lot of my work focuses there, but also hit on some other identities and belief systems as well. Uh, well put. Yes, this is definitely things we talk about in class in terms of there being rightfully being certain topics that take up a lot of the discourse in intergroup relations, but people have many, many identities. And so we need to look at the effect of intergroup relations across a lot of identities. So I really like the work that you're doing on religion. Um, can you just tell us a little bit more broadly about the the specific ideas that went into this paper? So, you know, what was the what made you want to focus on this idea about thinking about God and pro-sociality across religious identities? Yeah, so there's a couple different streams that all intersect for this paper. One is a quote that any scholar of intergroup relations might know, um, which is from Gordon Alport in his famous book, uh, The Nature of Prejudice. And he has this quote where he says, the role of religion is paradoxical. It both makes prejudice and it unmakes prejudice. I may have gotten that slightly wrong. Maybe the role of religion and prejudice, something like that. Um, I've always found that to be a really inspirational quote because it tells us almost nothing, but also tells us a lot. So what does it mean that this thing, religion, that plays such a central role in people's lives, both makes prejudice and unmakes prejudice? What well, means there must be counteracting forces? And trying to dive in and understand what those forces are is one of the big motivators for me and my research. How do we not just take a simplistic approach where religion is X, but we really think about all of the components, what works together, what works more adversarially against the other components, and what are the influences? So that's, I guess, like one part of the equation. And the other is this really big debate that's been happening in the field in social psychology and cultural anthropology about where do these beliefs, where do these beliefs come from? What are the nature? How do they spread? Um, and that's something that I really started to learn more of as I entered a postdoc working with Jeremy Gingas. Those are questions that drive him. Uh, and one of the things that's really interesting is that religion is thought to be this pro-social force, and it's shown to do a lot of really amazing things within group lines. What I mean by that is that religion promotes solidarity and pro-social behavior between co-religionists, people who share religious beliefs and identities. But religion is thought to have spread from cultural evolutionary theory, perhaps by fortifying group bonds and conferring a selective advantage so that groups with more parochial gods were thought to outcompete groups that didn't have those gods because those beliefs, these gods that kind of bind us into norms and lead us to treat in-group members better than out-group members would allow our groups to just be better, live in larger societies, out-compete. So that raises this question, well, shouldn't thinking about God then only promote pro-social behavior in in-group interactions and should it have more parochial or negative influences in inter-group interactions? Um, that's one of the, the big questions, but it just seems to us like religion is complicated. And there's all these examples of how religion doesn't always lead to negative, even though it does sometimes. Um, so trying to tease that apart was one of the big questions. How do we square the love the stranger as the self, the golden rule, with the parochial nature of, of cultural evolutionary theory? Yeah, and I think you, your paper does a really nice job of laying out these competing predictions and all of which if you can look at it through one a certain lens or certain framework can be consistent. So that's when you know you definitely have a right research question when, frankly, no matter which way it turns out, it's going to be interesting. Uh, and your findings were very interesting. Uh, but before we get into the specific, specific methods and results to editorialize a bit, I, I think probably the greatest strength of this paper is the diversity of the samples that you use. Uh, so you use really people from all over the world 
uh, and not just in terms of location, but also you varied the specific religious identities that they have. And this wasn't like the research I do where I mostly just put it up on online and wait for those people to log onto the internet and fill out my surveys. But it was actually, you know, in-person data collection, oftentimes in, in pretty difficult areas to get access to. So can you speak to a little bit about the data collection processes that went into this paper? Absolutely. Um, this was a really big team project. So I just want to say from the outset that like, it's my pleasure to speak on behalf of all the researchers. A lot of people contributed in a lot of different ways. Um, and that plays a really big role when it comes to data collection. So we were funded for this research um, with grants from the Templeton Foundation or Templeton Religious Trust and Natural Science Foundation, Canada Research Chair to Azim Sharif. Um, and all of that helped us do really in-depth data collection in, in a lot of different ways. So we had field studies that were conducted by myself, um, Jeremy Gingas, uh, Julia Smith, and Crystal Shackelford in Fiji. Uh, Crystal also did tremendous work leading field studies in large part on her own um, in the West Bank, which is really a remarkable feat in so many ways because it's a hard to reach area, required a ton of learning and engagement, also some personal risk being in an area um, such as the West Bank. So I just want to give her a real shout out for the, the tremendous work that she did. Um, and then we also had um, online studies that were conducted uh, with an Israeli scholar, Alon Vishkin, who played a large role in helping collect data in Israel, um, with American Christians, uh, with um, John Michael Kelly and Azim Sharif, Sindel White, um, and uh, r, &R and Zion. So you can see like it's just a big team that comes together. And that's necessary because it's one thing to just conduct an online study with American Christian samples. That's what a lot of the psychology of religion tends to do. It's another thing to try to think about how do we think of the ecological moderators that might actually help us understand the boundary conditions of effects. How do we think about religious belief? Is it the same across religions? Of course not. So we wanted to make sure we had Jewish samples, Christian samples, Muslim samples, and we also had a Hindu sample challenging our preconceptions because Hinduism obviously isn't a classic monotheistic religion. So a lot of challenges that come into all of these different components. And then not just thinking about religious diversity, but also thinking about context, because some of the cultural evolutionary theory that our work is based on suggests that threatening contexts or contexts high in conflict might have promoted different types of belief in God and belief in God might actually promote different types of behaviors in those contexts. So we really tried to sample settings that allowed us to test all of those various components um, in as detailed a way as possible. Yeah, and so I think that, I guess to, to underline that, uh, it's really laudable to, to you know, pool these resources and, and expertise together and make sure that you can test this question really broadly, because you're right, that's exactly when we start to make some more generalized conclusions about what really religion is doing. Although to jump off that idea, while you did in one sense have a lot of diversity across participants, uh, there was a, a, a line in your paper that I thought was interesting, where you said participants, all thousands of them, uh, were religious adults who overwhelmingly believed in, quote, a moralizing God who knows and cares about how people act and treat each other, rewards good deeds, and punishes morally bad behavior. Um, so that describes a lot of gods, but not necessarily all of them. So, you know, uh, do you think that this is kind of like a necessary condition that you have to believe in this type of a god in order for these effects to emerge? Or maybe you could just yeah. say more generally about why you focused on, on that as a selection criteria. It's, it's a great question. And there's debate in the field about this. There's a paper that I just saw last week, although I haven't read it fully yet. So I have to caveat and not, not go too far. Um, that I think challenges some of the questions of how much is belief in a punishing or rewarding God matter. It's something that we tested in our own research as well. Um, I'll take a step back and then kind of dive in for a deeper answer. We wanted to answer a question about believers. Um, we, we ran a study uh, in, with a U.S. sample that did test our question with atheists, and they don't show the same effects that we can mm -hmm. talk about more in depth. Um, but our goal was to sample people who are religious and to sample people who believed in what are so-called big gods, supernatural deities that police human moral behavior. We were constricted to that question because we wanted to understand what is the influence of thinking about God for people who hold those God beliefs. Um, so we use it within subject experimental design, only using people who hold those beliefs um, at baseline. We thought though, there should be variation. Maybe people who believe in a rewarding or a punishing God, they're gonna behave differently. Surprisingly, we didn't find that. 
Um, and I think that might square with some other recent research that suggests that it may be more about the bigness of the God as opposed to the rewarding or punishing nature of God um, that leads to, to the effects we find in. Okay, so to reiterate, it's something about um, the power or the universalism, ubiquity of the God rather than it specifically being like a punishing God. At least that's what we're finding. And, you know, we didn't manipulate the punishing or rewarding God in our study. We measured it. Um, and we do have constricted range on some of those measures because we purposefully sampled people who had these big God beliefs. So I don't want to go too far out um, other than to say I think it's a really interesting question. Um, and our data at least doesn't provide support for the idea that believing in a punishing or rewarding God is what accounts for the effects. Right. Um, I went out keeping a little bit Digging a little bit deeper into the specific results, uh, peek behind the curtain to my students, I thought that this was going to be a lecture that we learned, that we uh, a paper that we went over in our lecture on recategorization, the power of seeing people through a different lens, and uh, my novice understanding of you know intergroup relations about religion was that maybe this intervention about thinking about God was working because it promoted some sort of common and group identity that you are seeing. Um, that this effect works because now like you might be Jewish and I might be Muslim, but we all believe in a larger Abrahamic God. Um, and you did a nice job of testing this both in terms of setting up an experiment where the target outgroup person was an atheist or so someone who doesn't believe in a God at all. And also measuring the extent to which when it was, for example, a, a Jewish person interacting with a Muslim, the extent to which they that person perceives Judaism and Islam as being more common, more uh, more similar. And you didn't find either there. So it works the same regardless of whether it was a fellow believer in a God versus an atheist or for people who saw low versus high levels of commonality. So can you A, confirm to me that I'm not uh, crazy for thinking that this makes sense as a moderator? And can you tell me a little bit why, why you think it, it doesn't show up as a moderator of these effects? Yeah, really good questions. And you know, these are these are precisely the questions we were trying to answer in, in this research. You're correct. It's not crazy. We thought that there were really good reasons to think that commonality could be a moderator here. Um, I'll make one slight caveat, which is we did find that the effects of thinking about God, it led to stronger pro-sociality to fellow believers than to atheists, but it was still significant to atheists. Um, so there's a little bit of evidence that maybe, you know, that commonality matters, but when you measure commonality, it didn't moderate it, and we're still finding the effects regardless. So I think, you know, the general take home is, is true. So what's the mechanism? I think the hypothesis that we have is it comes down to what type of God do we believe in, not are we all believers in God? And a lot of people talk about God at least in the social sciences or more liberal and, and more secular settings as this really negative force. God, as uh, Dawkins puts it, is a quote, vindictive, bloodthirsty, ethnic cleanser, end quote. Well, if that's it, but God that people believe in, surely thinking about God's gonna lead to negative behaviors in intergroup settings or promote conflict. But we have a whole swath of research that doesn't really support that take. So in some of our studies, we find that people think that God wants them to value the lives of outgroup members more than they themselves do. We find that when people think about God, they dehumanize outgroup members less. And our thinking here is maybe people think that God cares about all of the beings under God's creation. They may believe, they may not, but God still thinks it's important that we treat everybody with respect and dignity, that we value everybody, and that we give to anyone who might be in need. And so it's perhaps that belief in God is associated with what we could call like more universalizing moral norms, that we're all human. It's important that we recognize we're all human. We all have value. And so when we think about God, what's that doing? Potentially, it's just activating this much more all-embracing mindset, as opposed to a more parochial mindset, which is the counter theory we were testing. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think you set that up well in your introduction that Maybe it's tempting to think of the way people think about God as, you know, he's a fan of my team, to put it uh, very bluntly. But it seems like more like people are seeing God as a fan of all beings, you know, all humanity. And so if that's the morality behind the God that I observed, then thinking about God will, will have me act more accordance to those principles. It's very interesting. Um, I want to jump off a point that you're making there and that you made earlier, which is whether you think that you could get similar effects not necessarily thinking about God, but thinking about anything that's, you know, larger than yourself, right? You know, we all 
live in a society we're all working together to uphold laws and care for each other and look out for each other so would, do you think that there's hope maybe that you could get similar effects or think invoking other phenomena like you know how would the ideal citizen how would you know uh these nation's four founders behave or something like that do you how specific do you think these effects are to thinking about god yeah i, I don't think they're unique to thinking about god at all um i think there are a lot of ways that we can motivate pro-social behavior I think we should explore all the possible ways to do so. Um, I think one way to think about our research question is not what's the effect of thinking about God on pro-social behavior, but what does our manipulation tell us about the type of God people believe in? And we can almost flip the question on its head. So could inducing awe, having people think about things bigger than themselves lead to positive effects? Absolutely. Could think about the founding fathers? Maybe might depend what type of founding fathers people believe in. Were they sexist or were they inclusive? Were they slave owners? Were they, you know, abolitionists? Those are, there's a lot of nuance. Um, I don't think any of our research team members would argue that belief in God is a unique thing in the sense that it's the only thing that could lead to the pro-social behavior. Our question by flipping it asks, well, what is the fact that belief in God leads to these types of behaviors when activated? Tell us about God and how these beliefs might have become widespread in the first place. Okay, okay. so you, setting up your design well so that you can infer from the pattern of results what how most people think of God, right? So if we only found if you only found that the effect works on fellow believers rather than and it didn't work at all, no effect on atheists, then you can infer that maybe these are people think about God as only caring about other believers more generally, but. Uh, the fact that you find it across all targets, yeah, it means that you can definitely infer how people are thinking about God. Um, that was well put. So thinking about next steps, either in this research program or your research program more generally, is there something really interesting that, about this research that you're most excited to follow up? Yeah, there's there's a lot of questions that our team is diving into. We're really fortunate to have some continued funding uh, with Jeremy Gingas taking the lead on a lot of this work, trying to tease apart whether there are contexts where we can flip the effects. So it seems like we found this effect. It seems to be relatively robust. We're not finding evidence for certain terms of moderators. But at the same time, it just feels intuitive that there should be some context where activating religious belief might lead to different types of moral norms taking hold or might exacerbate different types of moral behaviors. So trying to find those boundary conditions in a theoretical, like, grounded way and to test them is one of our goals. Um, so like, it's great, here's what we found, but let's not rest on the laurels. Let's let's try to build a more nuanced story. Um, that's, that's a big goal of ours. And then personally, trying to better understand how does this fit into the broader equation? Because even though we find this wonderful evidence that thinking about God is leading to extended pro-social behavior, most of our studies also find that people are biased along religious identity lines. So it's not in our case that religion is this panacea to solve intergroup relations. We're seeing that it exacerbates biases just like many other parochial forces do. So trying to tease those apart and understand how they operate together um, across contexts and, and moral situations is one of our big goals. Yeah, that sounds really exciting. Uh, spoken like a true motivated and I'd say slightly tortured social psychologist where most of the time things are so complicated and we say, well, how can we simplify this? You're, you here have an effect that's so simple and you're like well you know it has to be more complicated than this so let's try and find the places that it doesn't work so uh, i'm very excited to see what that turns out uh, thank you again so much for your time mikey and uh, i really appreciate you talking with us well thank you so much for your your time and interest and happy to answer questions for anyone else if they want to get in touch as well all right thank you mikey